Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about BGD amplifier circuits. This is our third example. In this example we will actually follow up on the second example we have discussed and we will see again an MPN transistor but in this case we see a emitter bypass capacitor. So we have discussed the emitter resistance. Now we also have a bypass capacitor which is a parallel capacitor across the emitter resistance and this will cause a lot of interesting things for our output response and then we should see that the gain will be quite large and that is also the objective of this example of course we will look at our calculations step by step and also verify these in our spice simulations so let's look at our problem we have now again a similar circuit as in example number two as said we have now this v the, the capacitor ce which is the emitter capacitor or the bypass capacitor now we have again the values exactly actually as in the example number two so you can see again the dc volt source the vbe for our uh, transistors and we have the resistors r1 r2 rs and also the rc and re the calculations we require are exact same as in example number two so we have again the same uh, known so we have the voltage gain if the beta is 100 and we repeat the process for beta is 200 and 300 but now we have this capacitor so well, let's see what the effect of that is so we assume again linear region of operation that means the the collector current here will be then beta times the base current which is flowing here in the configuration of linear region so let's look at the solutions we start with dc analysis and for that we can say the capacitor are all open and we consider actually this part of the circuit so this is open so we will lose this part and you will also have an open circuit here so we'll have this you see also the collector base and emitter currents and also the vbe and the vce all of them are dc quantities we can transform this first to the tefnn equivalent circuit as discussed in example number two so the equivalent circuit at node b required in a tefnn resistance which is then the parallel combination of r1 and r2 and that will then given the values here 8 kilo ohms now the another parameter for the equivalent circuit of tefnn is the tefnn voltage at this node it will be then the voltage division r2 over r1 plus r2 times vcc now using the values we are given we have given that is then 3 volts okay now we have the required values here and we can now set up the kirchhoff's voltage low here at the input so we can make a loop starting here and then complete at the same location that's then v thresh the tefnn is equal to v r tefnn times the ib plus the vbe plus the re times the ie which is shown here but we know the emitter current is determined by the beta plus one times the base current so if you combine that so you substitute this ie in here you will have this expression now you can see that ie can be now get taken together with these two parameters and we have now an expression for ib and this is the important equation you need to set up for this circuit and then we will see that beta will change that will cause a different base current and also other collector and emitter currents so let's zoom on one and then bring this together because these are the important parameters we require now and then we move on with a beta of 100 that means we can now set up this equation using the formulas and, and the values we have. We have 8000 for the Tefnn resistance. We have, it is 3 volts for the Tefnn voltage. VBE is 0.7, 800 for the RE, and the beta was 100. So if you do the math again, you will get 25.9 microamps. The collector current, again, the same thing. 100 times the 25.9 microamps, that will give us 2.59 um, milliamps okay so the emitter current will be then again beta plus one times the base current so 101 times the 25.9 microamps you will get 2.62 milliamps so those are similar or exact same values as in example number two now again setting up the kirchhoff voltage law with this case here the output uh, loop to determine the vce so we have this and if i now substitute the values in here for the emitter and the collector current and also the vcc given we have 7.73 now now the ac analysis that's the part where the difference comes because now you see the ac circuit the small signal 
equivalent circuit is different. We saw that the VCC here, which is a DC quantity, will be shorted, so this is AC ground, so the RC will go to ground. That's actually shown here. And the transistor here specifically is modeled by this part of the circuit, which is then the small signal model of this transistor. You see the dependent source again, and the RPI, which is a dynamic resistance, which, depend, which is dependent on the DC base current. We also see the R2 and R1 are in parallel. Why? Because from this node, base node, going to the ground is R2, but from this node going through R1 is also going to the ground, which is AC ground. So these are effectively in parallel when you consider AC analysis. The capacitors are perfectly short, that's why we have the RE shorted. And that is the fundamental difference between example number two here. So this is gone. And that is an improvement in our gain expression we'll, we shall see shortly. But it has some effect on the gain stability, also we will see that shortly. So from this node B, short circuit, RS, and then we have our input voltage. Now we will use this circuit to determine the required voltage gain and also for question B and C we will do a similar business. So we again define the ZIB which is then this part of the uh, impedance and also from this part the ZI. ZIB in this case is just RPi. It was before RPi plus beta plus 1 times RE because there was a resistor, the emitter resistor. Now it is not, so only we need R pi, and R pi is given by this formula. If I now substitute the 26 millivolts again for the thermal voltage divided by the base current, which is half determined, then we have 1004 ohms. So that means the ZIB is just R pi 1004 ohms. ZI is R1 in parallel with R2, but then also in parallel with the ZIB, but that is of course just R pi. That means again the same formula. And we just now use this 1004 here instead of the another value we had in example number two. Now if you do the math here, you will get here 892 ohms. So much smaller than what we had before in example number two. So that means the following. VO over VI, which is our gain, voltage gain, can be divided in two parts. VB over VI, which is from this node to that node. And from VB to the VO, which is also a part, so we divide the problem in two, as discussed in example number two. So VB over VI, which is just a voltage division, so this part from here looking in is just ZI, over RS plus ZI is the voltage division. VO over VB can be determined by looking at the VO and the VB itself. VB is R pi times I pi, I B because R pi and times RB is using Ohm's law is actually VB which is from this node to ground. And VO is minus beta times IB times RC. So that is again this part of the circuit. When you measure the voltage at this node, your current will go from ground to up in direction, but we measure from the collector to ground, that's why we have a minus sign. And this is the collector current, beta times IB. Now taking this together, we have the VO over VB, which is this expression. You lose the IBs from the numerator and denominator, you have this expression. Now we have this times this for the voltage gain. So we have now expression we can set up here and which is then much different and also much simpler than the example number two, where we had the RE. It also has an effect on the voltage gain because now the voltage gain is minus 128 which is much, much larger than what we had in example number two, which was approximately minus 2.3. So way larger here due to that bypass capacitor. Okay, so let's look at the DC analysis in the simulation result also. This is the circuit. You see the bypass capacitor here, which is just a 10 microfarad, so some value which is sufficient for our, let's say, frequency of operation. In this case, we see the DC current for the base, collector, DC collector current, DC uh, emitter current, and also the other values. And you see here the values we have calculated, and you see the values here, they are very close to what we have calculated. Again, have the agreement with our calculations. Let's also look at the transient response. And again, we had a gain of one, minus 128, and we will see if this is really true. This is again the input, the blue line, and the red one is the output. You see it is inverted, that's why also we have a minus sign. And the input voltage is given by this, is 10 millivolts peak, 
So that means 20 millivolts peak peak. So the output voltage here, looking at the maximum and minimum values, is looking at this one is 2.503 volts. That's, that's the peak peak value. Now the simple uh, math here is just peak peak output voltage divided by the peak peak input voltage will give you the gain. In this case, of course, using minus sign for sine inversion, that will give us minus 125. So we have calculated minus 128, but simulation gave us minus 125. So it's really close to what we have calculated. So that's the, again the nice confirmation. But let's now repeat the whole process a little bit faster, of course, for B-200. So going to 100, uh, for B-200, again, the same formula, because we start here. Only changes the beta, you see that it's 200. So I go a little bit faster, so the collector current and emitter current is also calculated, you see here. And we also calculate again the emitter, collector emitter voltage. Now the AC analysis again, the same circuit. So this is the model, again, using the short here for the emitter resistance. Taking this together, we will now determine again the ZIB and ZI. But we know ZIB is again our pi. This is this uh, expression. The base current now will be different. Now we have another R pi. This is the R pi. ZIB is just R pi. And ZI is the parallel combination of this and this. So three resistors actually effectively. Now again, the same business as we did before. Now we have 1,541 ohms here. Now, again, the same expressions for the voltage gain divided the problem in two sections here. You see that this is now again a similar problem, so I go a little bit faster to go to the actual discussion. This is now the formula, and the only changes here is the ZI, the beta, and also the RPI, and that will result here now in minus 158. So you see the gain has increased. Of course, not that much, but has increased some. So that is, of course, something we need to consider shortly in the summary of this discussion. So let's take this together and also look at the DC analysis in the simulation. This is the part. Again, the beta is here 200 for this transistor. You see the base current collector, the emitter, and also the collector emitter voltage. And those are in nice agreement with our calculations here. Small errors here due to more parameters in the actual model in the simulator. Looking at the transient response, and this is the gain we have calculated. Again, the blue line is the input, the red line is the output. The input is still the same, so 10 millivolts peak and 10 kilohertz as the frequency. Peak peak is still 20 millivolts, so that's symmetric around zero. You see the output here for the red one, which is the output voltage, is now 3 0.086. So you see it is larger than the 2.503 we had before for beta is 100. Now again the same calculations. Now we see it's minus 154 instead of minus 158 we have calculated. So the simulations and the calculations are also very close to each other. Why are the simulations are a little bit smaller than the calculated? Because we also don't know, do not take into account the other parameters in the BGT which is let's say the early voltage which is also taken into account in the model that will cause some reduction in the rc but it is a different story so that's why we see a little bit smaller gain in the simulator now moving on to the final one which is the beta s 300 similar problem so we move on with dc analysis again i will go a little faster collector emitter current and also vce and this is again the model and again, we place them together here and try to get the RPI and also the, the other parameters. RPI again, same formula. We see RPI here. We take them together parallel and we calculate the ZI. Now in order to calculate again the gain, we split the problem in two. And we again do the voltage division here. We, we determine the parameters for this, VO or VB. And take that together and we have a good expression. We multiply with this one. And we have this complete expression for our gain. Now we substitute again the new value for ZI, the beta, which is 300, and the R pi, which is now this value. Now we get minus 172. So you see again an increase of the gain. So let's see the DC analysis. Checking the DC analysis here. This is the beta of 300 for the transistor. You see they are in close agreement with our calculations. The important thing is also the transit response. And this is the gain we have calculated. Let's see the blue line and the red line. Now, the blue line is again the input, is the exact same. 
peak peak 20 millivolts but the output is now 3.346 volts peak peak doing the same calculations we see now it is minus 167 as the gain so again a little bit smaller with that extra parameter here due to early voltage and this is the what we have calculated but it's still very close to what we have calculated now let's take this together and also look at the summary of the results we have calculated so in the calculations we see the base currents for each beta value the collector the emitter and the vce which is the collector emitter voltage and also the gain you see the gain is yeah not really constant it has changed not that much because this is 100 percent up so this is not 100 percent maybe approximately 25 or 30 percent a little bit more that is of course better than this huge difference but it's still not really stable so we need to improve that that is actually also the discussion of the next example number four about how we can make this emitter resistance more stable so that's another topic another discussion uh, in the next video we can also look at the dc analysis summary in the uh, figures here you see again for each beta the results now let's also look at the transient response of the simulator this is for the beta is 100 the red one is for the 200 and this is for the 300 the gain here was determined in the simulator was minus 125 we had this and here was minus 154 we had this one and we had for the simulator was minus 167 and we had one minus 172 in our calculations so in summary we see the following the gain goes up a lot by making a bypass capacitor but the gain is not stable as it is as it was actually in our example number two so we need to find a compromise between a bypass capacitor and a, and a resistor which is there still in place in order to stabilize this also in the ac domain so the stabilization in the ac domain is actually not anymore here it's only in the dc domain that's the part we need to do so we will see that in example number four all right guys this is for example number three specifically discussing uh, the bypass capacity the effect of it on our gain as said uh, we will move on and further improve this circuit to get more stable results if you have any questions comments about this example please let me know and i will try to answer them as soon as possible see you next time in another video take care